three, two, one. And lift off. I think it's safe to say that Fun Spot Atlanta will never be the same. So let's look at the future of this park. What's up guys, Dr. Coaster here, and welcome back to another video on the channel. Before we dive into the impact of Air Force One and my predictions for the future of Funspot Atlanta, if you enjoyed the video, then be sure to drop it a like as it helps me fight the YouTube algorithm. While you're at it, subscribe to my channel as well so you don't miss out on future videos just like this. Opening as Dixieland Fun Park in 1990, Fun Spot Atlanta has been welcoming guests to its park for over 30 years. The park originated as an FEC with some go-karts, mini golf, and an arcade in the 90s, and began adding carnival-type rides in the mid-2000s. In the summer of 2017, Fun Spot America took ownership of the park and immediately began beefing it up with additional attractions, a multi-level go-kart track, food vendors, special events, and even a new park entrance. Heck, the park has even become a popular filming location most notably playing host to the uber-popular Netflix series Cobra Kai. However, Funspot's other two parks each featured standout coasters, of which Funspot Atlanta did not have. Until now. In May of 2021, while many parks were foregoing future projects or postponing ride openings due to the coronavirus pandemic, one little change stood up and showed the giants of the industry how it's done. On May 25th, 2021, Funspot America announced they were partnering with Rocky Mountain Construction, or RMC for something huge. We were left wondering for a few weeks as to what it could be. Maybe a Raptor? A hybrid? But the consensus across the coaster community and the theme park industry as a whole was that this would be the first family coaster from RMC, having just been announced less than two weeks prior. It didn't take long for Fun Spot to shoot down those rumors with a series of teasers that they released on social media. And guess what? Almost everybody's predictions were wrong. We knew that this was the most expensive investment in Fun Spot's history. But all we knew was a price of mind blower, coming in at $6 million. For this reason, I thought Fun Spot Atlanta would be receiving a Raptor clone, as it fit that price range and there wasn't one geographically close to the park at all. This is actually the topic of the first ever video that I made on this channel. Being pretty familiar with the park, I was expecting more than just a family coaster, as I was aware of the kind of room that they were working with, but a $13 million record breaking, one of a kind, ground up hybrid coaster was not what I, nor anyone else was expecting. But none of us are complaining. Air Force One is set to be one of the greatest coasters in the world when it opens this summer, and I believe it's only the beginning for this park. It's hard to tell exactly what the financial situation is for the Fun Spot chain going forward, but their willingness to acquire new parks and invest in huge projects can only be a positive sign. When I was planning out this video, I debated how I wanted to set out my predictions. And what I've ultimately decided to do is to lay out chronologically what I believe the future of Fun Spot Atlanta will look like over the next 10 to 20 years taking land and cost into consideration. Before we can do that, let's start with what we know. Back at IAPA in 2021, John Airy Jr., the owner and CEO of Funspot America, spoke briefly about his vision for the park. He stated that the park sits on 116 acres of land, and they are currently only using about 20 of those acres. Even with the addition of Airy Force One, the park hasn't surpassed that number by much at all. When asked why the Atlanta Park, instead of one of the two Florida parks, he explained that the Florida parks have become landlocked, and that their Atlanta location needs a shot in the arm to draw in more crowds to set the park up for the future. Acknowledging the land that they have to work with, he teased that they had aims of adding more roller coasters, a water park, and even a hotel. The chain is fully interested in transforming this park into their flagship location. While they haven't said it publicly, they understand that Atlanta has been one of the fastest growing cities in America as of late, and that's the market they're eager to tap into. Atlanta can successfully support more than just one park. Now that we had the park's vision of what they expect going forward, let's get into this. Starting off in 2022, the park will be adding Air Force One, the record-breaking RMC hybrid coaster that we've already spoken about. As previously mentioned, the park currently has 160 acres of land. According to government maps, it's actually 116.81, but who's keeping track? Air Force One will feature an L-shaped out-and-back layout on the plot of land shown here, barely taking a dent out of the park's available land. This coaster is going to be huge for the park, and will serve as a launch pad into its future. Funspot appears to be enjoying trying new, world's first type of attractions, and I think that trend will continue. In 2023, 
I believe Funspot will follow up the addition to Air Force One with a seemingly not so huge filler project that will actually be huge for the development of the park. The parking lot for this location is currently not paved. When you enter the park, you drive down a paved road that takes you to the parking lot. Seen here, it currently has a rough outline for rows, but not individual spots aside from pass holder parking. So I believe the park will pave this during the 2022 to 2023 off season. In 2024 and 2025, I believe the park will be adding a new set of thrill rides, a new drop tower, and a new family to mid-tier thrill coaster. I could see either of these being added either year, but I'm going to lead towards a new coaster in 2024 and a drop tower in 2025. In 2024, the park will add its fourth coaster, and this one is honestly just too easy to predict for me. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the deal has already been made. Funspot will once again work with RMC and will open one of its first family hybrid coasters in the world. I'll even go out as far to predict a name, Air Force 2, and it'll be located right here, next to Air Force 1, where the batting cages are located. These aren't a very popular attraction at the park, so I could see Fun Spot separating from them in the near future to once again save space and add another coaster. We don't know the price tag of these coasters yet, but I'm guessing that it can't be any more than four to five million dollars based off similar models in the market. Possibly on the cheaper end, if it was a part of a package deal with Air Force One. As mentioned, in 2025, I believe the park will be adding a drop tower. The park currently has a small drop tower from Moser Rides that's good for young thrill seekers, but they could use a larger one as well. Funspot has a history of working with SNS on their screaming swings, so I'll predict a partnership here. Funspot touts working with American companies, and the existing relationship goes both ways to the RMC, and makes this a perfect fit. This will be 150 to 175 feet tall, and could feature the new seats the SNS recently released. Based on the fact that it cost Hershey Park $8 million to add the Hershey Triple Tower in 2017, Funspot could realistically add a pretty solid one in the $2.5 million to $3 million range. Possibly cheaper if they could get a relocation of an SNS drop tower. As for the location of the drop tower, I believe it'll go here. This is the location of the former zip line, which was once a standout attraction of the park. I was curious as to why it had been standing but not operating for a few years now, but I've definitely got my answer now. Zipline used to travel from the tower over the go-karts and bumper boats and conclude by the batting cages, flying right over where the middle and ending of Air Force One's layout will be located. Once again, this location won't take up any additional room at the park and it will remove an unused attraction while continuing to improve the park. In 2026, I expect the park to keep a fairly low profile while continuing to give the park a facelift and make it their own. They might add some new kiddie rides or smaller attractions, maybe even something like an SBF Visa, but nothing too extravagant. These rides could go basically anywhere, like here, or here. Whatever these investments are, I don't expect them to exceed half a million dollars. In 2027, however, I believe we'll start to see some dirt moving, right here, along the water. Once again saving undeveloped land for future projects. And then we'll receive another huge announcement from Funspot in celebration of the park's 10 year anniversary under their ownership. In 2028, Funspot will once again work with GCI to bring us a new wooden coaster similar to White Lightning at the Orlando Park. White Lightning cost the chain $3.5 million when it opened in 2013. Accounting for inflation, as this would be opening 15 years after that, for the sake of the video I'll predict that this will end up in the $5 million range, making this GCI the third major coaster to come to the park in 7 years. Plot twist, however, those familiar with White Lightning know that it features the world's first Titan track from GCI. This coast could potentially utilize that technology to add some additional hype to the new edition. Starting with 2029, I won't be making a prediction for every single year, but rather giving a range of when I believe new editions could be coming. Or else this video is going to take forever. Forever! Forever! I don't think the park will invest much capital for a few years following the addition of the GCI. This trend will continue for a few years, and I believe they will once again reach out to RMC, this time to build a Raptor. Reminiscent of Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster, I think they'll put this right here over the water. We'll say this addition will happen in 2031, which is probably wishful thinking, but we'll go with it. It'll likely cost a park somewhere in the $7 million range. I think that'll do it for new ride additions to the park for a while. At this point, they would have successfully built one of the greatest small parks in the country, and they can focus on their future vision for the park going forward. If you weren't keeping track, including Air Force One, these additions will cost the park an estimated total of 30 to $35 million over the course of the next 10 years. A pretty realistic number if you ask me. But most importantly, this will leave the park with approximately 75 to 80 acres of unused land. Moving into the 2030s now, Funswell will begin planning the addition of their hotel and water park. 
While these additions could be added at separate times, I think Funspot will save up and add these together. Something reminiscent of a Great Wolf Lodge. This will give Funspot a year-round attraction that can continue earning revenue during the off-season. I think the hotel will look something like Cedar Point's Express Hotel, nothing over the top, but something that gets the job done and provides guests a comfortable place to stay. For the water park, I think we look in the fun spots past to get an idea what it might look like. When John Aries Sr. patented the multi-level go-kart track technology, he did so after visiting Wisconsin Dells, and I believe the park could also pull inspiration from Mount Olympus in this scenario as well, building a water park in Atlanta, the likes of the popular one that they've built up north. They could put this hotel and water park complex in multiple different locations, but I believe they'll put it over here by the parking lot and entrance to the park. This would easily allow hotel guests early access to the park when staying on site as well, a common practice in the theme park industry. Now, I have no idea what this project would cost. It may even be far outside of their price range. So I'm going to predict this will open sometime between 2038 and 2042, wrapping up the future of the park for the next two decades. Even after all these additions, Fun Spot Atlanta is still left with several dozen acres to continue transforming this soon to be huge, epic park. And yes, if you've noticed, they could potentially purchase additional surrounding land to incorporate into the park. But that could be a topic for a whole other video. Thank you all for watching, and for getting me the 200 subscribers here on the channel. I couldn't have done it without you. Those are my predictions for what the future of Fun Spot Atlanta might look like. What do you think the park will look like? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then be sure to give it a like, and subscribe for more theme park content just like this. As promised, I've got a special announcement. I've teamed up with a fellow coaster enthusiast from Georgia and founded the Georgia Coaster Connection, an Instagram page dedicated to connecting you to not only roller coasters in the state of Georgia, but enthusiasts across the world. We've got a lot of big plans for the future, and we'd love you to be a part of it, so be sure to go check it out. I'll leave the link in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.